Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to be sharing the story of how Romaine and I met which is something that everybody wants to know and it's probably not how you would have thought we would have met so I thought why not share it on YouTube. So I'm going to start like right <laughs> from the beginning. There is quite a lot to this story but basically I had just come out of a eight year relationship so from the age of 17 to 25, I was in a super long relationship. It wasn't good for me. I felt really, really shit. I was made to feel worthless. It was just the worst relationship that I could have been in for that long. Coming out of that relationship, I wanted to be on my own. I didn't think, oh, I need to go and find someone to get back into a relationship with because I think being with someone like that who didn't have a very good influence on me and wasn't very good for me. I just wanted to be free. I just wanted to be me. I wanted to find who I was. I wanted to do my own thing. I just wanted to build myself back up again. And the only way that you really can do that is, I believe, on your own and by yourself. So I started my Instagram and I'm really not interested in guys. You know, you get the odd DM come in and it's just like, nah, yeah, okay, like kind of whatever, like not interested. And then a DM came in from Remain and he said, and I quote, what are you doing to me? Watch out, Ryan. <laughs> because he basically replied on a picture that I posted of my abs. But I was like, Oh, I'm going to check out this guy's profile. I don't know what made me think that, but I, I went onto his profile, had a little scroll, had a little stalk, had a little nose, read some of his captions, looked at some of his videos, because back then Instagram was pretty much just pictures and the videos were only 15 seconds and no one really did videos back then, but he had a few videos of him on like the Stairmaster, just working really hard and I felt like he was different from guys who were messaging me. I didn't feel like he loved himself. He was more like all about the hard work and I really liked the look of that. By the way, guys, this was happening over a year. So I'd been on my own for just over a year and then this, this happened. So I'm looking at his profile thinking, this guy actually don't look too bad. And something like really intrigued me about him. And then from those DMs, we just started to DM each other. I can't I can't remember what the other messages were saying. I think it was pretty much just like, where are you from? And he thought I was from Manchester. I'm pretty sure he thought I was from Manchester. So random. He was actually from Bristol. So Bristol to where I lived in Dunstable was three hours away. So it's a very long drive. And then he asked for my Facebook because he thought I wasn't a real person. Oh no, I've forgotten that bit. So how he found me was he was looking on a clothing website it was like a gym clothing website called man up gym wear i don't even know if they're still around anymore and they had sent me some free stuff <laughs> this is proper old school and i had taken some pictures in it and then they had reposted my picture with my tag and remain was on that profile and he saw it wasn't even my head or anything it was literally just my abs and he obviously saw that picture and he clicked on my name and that's how he found me and came through to my profile and then from there he dm me so he asked for my facebook because he didn't think that i was a real person and he wanted to i guess stalk me to see if i had a family like if i had like any history of posting so obviously i accepted him on facebook and i remember him saying that he was really shocked that i only had 300 friends which i thought was really weird because my facebook was purely just for like friends family and kind of like acquaintances it wasn't really for anyone i didn't really know but he had like 3,000 friends so i i can oh my battery's gonna die now I'm trying to like <laughs> run away from the sun. Anyway, he saw I was a real person and then he asked for my number so he could add me on WhatsApp. Then we started WhatsApp him and then at the time he was actually on prep for a bodybuilding competition. And then we were just like exchanging WhatsApp messages and then he was like, why don't I come down to Milton Keynes because it looks like there's some really good dessert places down there, which I honestly thought was really random. So I was like, why would you randomly say about dessert and not dinner? But I did think that a three hour drive for him was a bit unfair. So I offered to meet him halfway. So then it was hour and a half drive for him, hour and a half drive for me. And we met in a pub called The Flowing Well in Abingdon in Oxford on the 9th of October for our first date. 
So by this point, I'd been telling my mom all about him. <laughs> she always says how much I used to speak about him. I hadn't even met him at this point, but I was just like, look at this video, look at this video, look at this picture. <laughs> oh my God, it's embarrassing. So I told my mom and dad, and I was like, guys, I'm gonna go and meet this guy called Romain who I've been talking about. And obviously it doesn't sound very good because I'm meeting a guy off the internet. My dad was a bit like, oh, you're not gonna meet someone off the internet, are you? Like. <laughs> I was like, don't worry, like, I've stalked his Facebook, I've stalked his Instagram, I've seen he's got friends, like, we're eating in a pub, like, I'm sure he's gonna be fine. <laughs> People always ask me, like, how did you feel, like, on your first date? How did you feel beforehand? And honestly, I didn't feel nervous at all. And I think it's because I had been on my own for just over a year now, and I really found myself, I felt strong mentally, I felt truly happy, like I truly knew who I was, I didn't have anyone's influence on me, you know, making me feel a certain way, making me feel worthless. I had done so much in that year out of my comfort zone and I was just, I truly felt so, so liberated that year. So nothing or no one could bring me down. So I was just like, if you don't like me, don't like me. But obviously I was secretly hoping that he would really like me. And by the way, this was my first proper date. I'm, I'm, 20, I'm 26 at this point, okay? And this is my first date. I'd never dated anyone. I'd had boyfriends, but I'd known them before like we made it official. So I had never been on a date with someone who I didn't know or I'd never met. And this is honestly why I always say to people, when you break up with someone, try not to go and get in a relationship so quickly because being on your own is the most magical thing you can ever do to just truly find yourself anyway i was on the way it was dark because it's coming into winter and i took a wrong turn down this lane and i hardly had any signal so i find him and i was like i think i'm gonna be a bit late which by the way guys i absolutely hate being late for anything i would rather be an hour early than be one two three four five minutes late i just hate being late Anyways, we were laughing about it and I was thinking, God, that's such a good impression already. Like, I've taken a wrong turn, I've got lost on the way. So I finally pull up to the pub and I'm like, cool, like I found it, I've parked, okay, it looks like a really nice pub. I'm thinking, well, he's gonna be in there. So I walk in and I'm like, yeah, table for two. <laughs> and then he's not there. And I'm like, oh my God, where is he? So I'm like, it's cool, it's cool. So I sit down and I'm just sitting there and I'm just waiting and I'm like, oh my God, like, is he even coming? And all of a sudden I just felt this person walk behind me and just kind of touch me on the shoulder. And I turned around and I was just like, wow, hello, <laughs> who? And he comes around and he sits down, sits opposite me and I was just like, wow. And I'm like, play it cool, play it cool. Let's like have a sip of my drink. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm fine, you know? Because I was just like, wow, he's so handsome. and. Oh, and we basically just clicked straight away. Like we were just chatting for ages. I was just finding him so interesting because I didn't know anything about bodybuilding. This was right at the beginning of my weightlifting journey. So I didn't really know about the nutrition side. I didn't really know about the weightlifting, even though I had been doing it for quite a few months by then. I didn't really know what I was doing, you know? I was just doing what I was doing because I saw people doing it. So I was just finding it really, really interesting. And I was like, asking so many questions about it. And he, he thought I was being fake. He couldn't believe that I was interested in what he had to say, which is quite funny. And he and he says now, like, he just remembers looking at me and because I, I was always laughing. But I do laugh a lot and I do smile and laugh a lot about nothing, really. And he, and he says that he just remembers looking at me being like, oh, this girl is so cute. <laughs> So anyway, we ordered our dinner and we ordered the same dinner. So he was actually on prep. I can't remember if I said that. So he was on prep for a competition. So he got the skinny burger. I got the skinny burger and we got a glass of water each. <laughs> oh my God, this is so funny. And yeah, we were just chatting for hours and hours, just getting on really well to the point that the restaurant actually closed and everyone had left and we didn't even realize. You know like when you're just really in the moment and you're not you're not aware of what's going on around you because you're just you're just so focused on being in the moment with someone. And they came over and they were like, excuse me, like the restaurant's closed now, you can't go. So that was quite nice because obviously that was a good sign, you know, like the conversation was flowing, we were getting on really well and it was just a really, really nice evening. And I just feel like 
it made it so much better that I didn't have any expectation about anything and I didn't have any nerves so I just I didn't put any pressure on myself and I think it just made it feel so much easier so anyways we leave the restaurant go into the car park to our car now I am not the kind of girl who gives a kiss or anything like that on the first date well this was my first date but I'm like that kind of girl you know so got to our cars and I was like, oh, thank you for a lovely evening. It was so nice to meet you. Gave you a nice hug. I was like, oh, <laughs> I could stay here. And then, yeah, that was pretty much it. It was such a good first date. My very first date and my very last first date. <laughs> and it was literally the best. So I'll tell you about the two weeks that followed after our first date as well. So he sent me this huge bouquet of flowers to my workplace. Brownie points. And at the time I was working at Network Rail in Milton Keynes. So it's like, a, it's a huge, 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 huge building. And someone called up to my phone and was like, oh, you've got a like bouquet of flowers down here. And I'm like, what? I, I've only been working now, I think for like six months or four five months so i was like fairly new here guys and i'm like oh my god this is so sweet like he sent me a bouquet of flowers to my workplace so anyways i went down and it was it was big okay like it was huge i had to walk through back to my desk which was quite far like this place quite far away with this huge bouquet of flowers right in my face i was like having to flip around them like <laughs> i'll go up to my desk and put them down they're absolutely stunning and he added a little card in there saying lisa these are to distract you from the cakes because basically where i sat i i sat at the end of the row of desks and then we had like a tall filing cabinet here and then that is where all the cakes and the biscuits used to be put. And I had to have massive willpower to sit there. And I'd be like sending him pictures of like what people have bought in. M&S biscuits, they are my favorite. I used to have, obviously I would have one, but it was really hard to, you know, resist the temptation. So he put that little card in and I was just like, that is cute. And like every time someone was walking past my desk, obviously their eyes were just drawn because they'd be just there like, hello, look at me. And they were like, oh my God, who are those flowers from? And I was just like, oh my God, my goodness. So then the weekend afterwards, he came to stay at my house, guys. Oh, I can't believe, it. I actually, I, when I look back, I actually can't believe that. He came to stay at my house. He met my mum and dad and he met Pee Pee and he loved Pee Pee. And I took a picture of him holding Pee Pee and it was the cutest thing. And yeah, he got on really well with my mum and dad, which was amazing. My mum and dad are just, the coolest people and everyone just gets along with my mom and dad so i knew he would love my mom and dad and i knew they would love him so then on the sunday we were like we wanted to do something fun so we went to fort park and he actually bought his um whole prep bag um with food in it which i was like geez this guy's dedicated like he had his sweet potato he had his chicken and he had his asparagus like just plain in a tupperware anyway it was a really really fun day we both had so much fun and then he drove home and i went back to mine then i think it was like two weeks after that so this all happened in the space of four weeks he was competing in liverpool so that's a four hour it's like a, around a four hour drive from my house and i just really wanted to go and support him and watch him and i think at that point we just knew that we really really liked each other so i drove from my house all the way down to liverpool Liverpool and yeah like watched him compete he won he came first place which was amazing to see we hung out we went for a night out we walked around Liverpool we got some breakfast and again we just had a really really nice time but I think where he had been competing I think it was quite a long stretch of shows that he had done all throughout the year I think he had got like now I can understand it but back then I didn't have any idea of how he was feeling but he was like I really want to go on holiday you know I'm, I'm gonna book us a holiday to go away and I'm like damn like this is literally like I've just met you like three weeks or four weeks ago and he's already talking about a holiday to be honest I just think he wanted to go away and I was just I was just there for the taking to go with and you know bring along <laughs> no but so yeah he was like yeah i want to go on holiday so i'm gonna book us a holiday at the time i didn't really have a lot of money because i wasn't really earning a lot but he was like you know it's going to be all on me and i'm like oh my god this is he is so kind this is so nice so yeah we went on holiday together but i think that is for a whole another video because we didn't just go on holiday together something happened on the holiday which meant we ended up staying for a way longer period of time which wasn't supposed to happen i just think that's a whole nother story for a 
a different video. So yeah, guys, that is the story of how Romaine and I met. Oh, it truly is a fairy tale. And seven years on, we are still together. We are still strong. We've built so much. We've built so much together. And I still can't believe it because a lot of you will know that I actually went to see a medium back in 2014. I think it was the year before I met Romaine. And the things that he said have all come to fruition, which is super weird. And one of the things he said was that I was going to meet somebody who was tall and dark. And yeah, I know that is really generalized, but he was like, he's going to be into, he's really going to be into fitness and you're going to get stuck into fitness. And at this point I weren't even into fitness. Well, I was into my fitness classes, but I wasn't into my weight training. And he was like, you're going to have your own business together. You're going to go self-employed. You're going to get your teeth stuck into fitness and this and that with this guy. And I'm like, what is this? What is he going on about? And then I met Romaine and I'm like, holy shit, this actually happened. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed reliving this special, special memory as much as I did. And I will see you in my next video.